Hello, welcome to Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. We're going to continue to examine the Halloween offerings of Ben Cooper. This time, we're going to look at something that is very rarely discussed, Ben Cooper's toys. They're very well known for their Halloween costumes, but no one ever talks about their toys. Ah! There we go, gotta hold his hat on. Boo. Ben Cooper made a number of PVC rubber jigglers in the 70s and early 1980s. Now ordinarily I give you a little history lesson about the company, but we just talked about Ben Cooper last week, last episode, and uh, I've covered Ben Cooper before on the show, and there's just so much that's been written and said about Ben Cooper. There's been books, uh, documentaries, there's a new documentary on the way, so you can just Google Ben Cooper and find out all kinds of information, which is not often the case with the companies that we look at on this show. They're very obscure. Sometimes there's just no information available out there. But Ben Cooper is different. Ben Cooper is very famous and popular, and there's a lot of information on Ben Cooper. But not the toys. And that's a shame, because the toys were a, a major portion of Ben Cooper's output during a certain period. So if you want to know more about the company Ben Cooper, watch one of the previous episodes where I discuss Ben Cooper, or read a book, or watch one of these documentaries, or Google Ben Cooper. We have so much to cover that I want to just jump right into it. Uh, I would really like to interview someone involved who, who was involved with Ben Cooper who would know about the toys. Why did they get into making toys? How were they made? Were they designed in-house? Uh, how many of them were original Ben Cooper designs? How many were items that were already available wholesale from Hong Kong suppliers and Ben Cooper just put their name on it? What was the story with the toys? Because no one, no one talks about the toys. They talk about the costumes, how they were designed, the whole history, everything about the costumes, but not the toys. Now, last week we looked at rubber masks. So Ben Cooper, they're known for plastic masks and, and, and uh, uh, vinyl costumes, but they're very much into rubber products. Now those masks we looked at last week were latex rubber. This is PVC. It's considered a type of rubber, but it's actually plastic. It's petroleum based, it's not latex based. And these kinds of toys are called jigglers because to varying degrees they jiggle, this one not so much. They were popular in the 70s, uh, well obviously among children, but also adults would hang them from their rear view mirrors in their automobiles using these, these dangly little elastic <laughs> cords. So they would dangle these things from the rear view mirror of their car and this thing would hang in front of them as they drive. Now I wouldn't suspend any of these from their elastic now because the, the elastic does have latex in it and just like a latex mask it either becomes gooey or brittle. The latex rots and so the elastic really is only held together by the th fabric, the outer coating. So with any jiggler, be very careful hanging it by the elastic or, or dangling it by the elastic because you're liable to break it. This is, what is this guy? He's Pumpkin Man, that's a simple name. Pumpkin Man. By Ben Cooper. And he has a plastic hat. This is a hard hat. I, I, I can't think of another Ben Cooper jiggler that has an accessory. This guy does. It's a hat. And it's the elastic 
runs through it, making it all the more delicate because if this elastic breaks and the hat comes off. So you gotta be very careful. Let's see, uh, when was this guy made? It's made in Hong Kong, that's, that's good. Uh, 1974. Vancouver is pretty good about putting dates on their labels. And as you can see, he is a, a Halloween character. Let's set him over there. Now, if Billy comes over, Billy likes to eat jigglers. As you might have noticed on past episodes, when I have jigglers out, Billy tries to eat them. So this could become a very expensive episode. Let's see here. Let's see if there's any value in looking at a couple of these catalogs before we move on. I was saying I really want to do something more in depth on the Ben Cooper toys. I don't know if this new documentary that's in the works is going to cover the toys or not. Uh, but I would like to do maybe an article for Toy Ventures. By the way, I've got a recurring column in Toy Ventures. That's a magazine published by Brian Heiler. And you can find my Basement of Horror column in uh, most issues. So far, it's been every consecutive issue since I've started. I don't know if it'll continue that way, but uh, as far as I know, the plan would be more often than not to have my column in there. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you what the next uh, issue contains because Brian hasn't announced that yet, but I do have a, a Basement of Horror column in there. Here is Ben Cooper catalog from 1975. And Ben Cooper, oh, and look at the way they they show you how the jigglers are dangling. See how the kids are dangling those jigglers by the elastic. Um, let's see here. And the thing about Ben Cooper catalogs, they just have these illustrations. They don't have photos of the items. Now these are jigglers. So right away, we've got jigglers. In fact, yeah, this whole catalog is jiggler oriented. Here's is it, am I, am I a liar? No, it's a Jiggler catalog. The whole thing is Jigglers. And you can see there, they call them Wigglers. Wigglers. Action Wigglers for all year round sales. Big volume, big profits, wiggly fun favorites that kids know and love. Ben Cooper, Inc. And again, this is 1975. Uh, let's see. So I showed you, we've got Cartoon characters like Woody Woodpecker, Fred Flintstone, Popeye, Olive Oil. I have the Popeye figures. I don't think I have any. No, I don't. I don't have any um, Fred Flintstone characters. Did they make Barney Rubble? I'm not sure. I thought they did. But I just see Fred here. Well, I don't have Fred. I don't have Woody. Uh, I'd like to have both. I have multiples of Popeye and olive oil, but that's because I had them as a kid. That's why I wanted to collect those as an adult. Here's our old friends, the creature people. We saw those last season. And there's some licensed Planet of the Apes jigglers. And I have all those. So one of these days we'll see the Planet of the Apes jigglers. We already saw the creature people. Exclusive Warrior and Caesar, another Ben Cooper first. And the Creature People says, our fabulous, scary, the Creature People from science fiction. We've got some friends coming up here. Now, they're superheroes. And even though they're not monsters, we'll look at those eventually. In fact, we're going to look at a Spider-Man later, I think. Uh, and here's our buddies. Scarecrow Sam and Pumpkin Man for Halloween. There they are. I don't see the hat on Pumpkin Man. Does, does it mention his hat? And it's not on the box illustration either. Here's our likable, pliable, plastic figures, they call them plastic, that wiggle and jiggle on their own strings. Now, Jiggle, Jiggler, is a collector term. That Companies never called them Jigglers. Collectors adopted that name in the 1990s to refer to all these, this whole genre of toy. 
And I keep trying to make a point about wanting to do a, uh, an article or something. If you know someone who was associated with Ben Cooper who can tell me about, give me information about uh, like behind the scenes kind of information about the whole process and the whole goal of making the toys. Why did they get into the toys? What was their attitude towards the toys? Uh, did they consider that a big part of their business? How were the toys made? All that stuff. The only person I can think of that maybe could talk to me about that would be Bob Cooper, if I've got his name correct. He was, I think, the last president of Ben Cooper before they were bought out in the 90s. Uh, and he was he's in one of the documentaries. So I haven't been able to... There, Bob Cooper is a very common name. Uh, I haven't been able to locate him. I've asked around. No one has told me how to find him. So uh, if you know how to locate Bob Cooper, if he's still alive, I'd like to talk to him. Even if he doesn't think he has a whole lot to say, I, I can't think of anyone else who would be better to interview about the toys. Uh, there is a member, another member of the Ben Cooper family that I did talk to, and she didn't, she knew about the costumes, but she didn't know about the toys, and she couldn't find any information on them. And unfortunately, so many of these people have passed away, and the few people who remain aren't going to be here much longer. So the clock is ticking to get this, to get this story down and get it out there. Maybe it's in this documentary. It's, I mean, there's a new documentary coming. Maybe it's, maybe it's in there. I don't know. Maybe they talked to Bob. Uh, I would think so. If you're going to do a Ben Cooper documentary and he's still alive, you got to talk to him. But I just wish I could get some information on the jigglers, on the toys, and do something, a video, an article, something just about the toys specifically. So about our Halloween friends, just put our, just put our newly designed box on your checkout counter and watch your sales boom. Every child knows and loves these Halloween characters, brilliantly designed and detailed favorites. Hmm. Two dozen to a carton. Jiggle and wiggle for holiday fun. Jiggle and wiggle for holiday fun. Uh, let's look at that again. We're, we're going to see the scarecrow in a second. Here's some more buddies. We're not going to look at bats or spiders or anything like that. You see the spider there. We're not going to do that in this episode. We'll save that for another episode. Um, now this flying Frankenstein, I've never seen him. I'm wondering if they made him in that flying position. I've never, I've never seen a flying Frankie like that. But I mean, they've got the box art all laid out there. Did they make him? Does anyone know? Has anyone ever seen a flying Frankenstein? I know the standing Frankenstein, but the flying one. So stuff like um, spiders and bats and what, what have you, critters, like all these things. We'll look at those in another episode someday. We're going to save those. We're just going to look at character toys today. And uh, not even all characters. We're not going to look at superheroes and other movie characters. We're just going to look at monsters and Halloween. Like those guys. Now, what do they call them? House Haunters, because their name changed over time. So in this catalog, they're called House Haunters, our House Haunter Monsters, in now in Economy Six Pack. You get two dozen Wolfo, two dozen Vampo, two dozen Bones the Skeleton. So over time, they called them, and again, they're talking about wiggly, wiggling and jiggling. They're using those adjectives. So that's how collectors uh, chose that word jiggler. They, that was some of the language that these companies used to describe these kinds of toys. Here's some dogs. I do have oh, at least a couple of those dogs. That's supposed to be Godzilla. Do they call him Godzilla in this? No, they don't. 
prehistoric dinosaur. Okay, well, later they issued him as Godzilla. And there's a caveman. What do they call the caveman? Stony the caveman. Now, he's interesting because... Um, oh, Ben Cooper's proven big seller. Big impulse item. Ideal for checkout counters. Hmm, that's what they say about Stony the Caveman. He's interesting because I think other companies issued that same Jiggler. I don't think every one of those that you see, in fact, I think most of the ones you see for sale, Stony the Caveman, are not actually Ben Cooper. So I'm going to show you Stony in a little bit, and I'm not sure if either of the ones I'm going to show you are actually Ben Cooper. Same toy, but put out by another company. And here's the Planet of the Apes and other characters on cards. Look at those cards. And we're going to see a little bit of that in a, in a minute. Okay, so I think, again, in the interest of time, that's all we're going to do with this. I have another catalog here, but I don't know. What year is this catalog? 1982. This one is a reprint. This is not a genuine catalog. Let's... Let's just flip through it quickly, see if there's something I think is worthwhile. Yeah, okay, there's something on the back here that's pretty good. Yeah, I guess I need to show you this. <laughs> okay, I want to get to the toys. Um, see, because this is a reprint, um, it uh, the ink the pages stick to each other because of the ink. It's it's not a genuine vintage catalog. Yeah, okay, I guess I gotta show you these. All right, we'll start with um, more of these critters. Here's some of the, the packaging that they came in. Now, most of the time, these were sold just in the counter display boxes, just dump boxes, just open boxes on a counter or on a shelf in a store. But they also offered them in uh, bags and cards. And you see here now this dinosaur is called Godzilla now. It's the same dinosaur. Okay, this is interesting. Cat and mouse. It's a black cat and a mouse and they were sold separately together in the same counter display box. But if you just had one, not the other, you, you wouldn't know that this mouse is supposed to go with this cat. But it's cat and mouse. Display them on checkout counters. Stack them up on your end counters. Get them visible for impulse selling. Tremendous for dollar day promotions, birthday favors, Christmas stuffers, Great naturals for your tie-in sales. Available from Ben Cooper, 52 weeks a year, because that's how they sell. Squeezable, playable, durable plastic in a new Ben Cooper creation. Cat and mouse. Great impulse item for checkout counters. And it just says the same old stuff. A box consists of 12 black cats and 12 gray mice. 1982 Ben Cooper. Look at that. All right, so I think we got the, the basis now. We know what we're going to look at. When I was a kid, the Jigglers were really important to me. In fact, I think the Jigglers were more important to me than the costumes when I was a kid. I think I was more interested in the Jigglers, the rubber toys, than I was in the I was interested in the costumes, too. But, you know, I liked... Imagineering and Top Stone, all kinds of other stuff for the costumes. Uh, I wasn't just a Ben Cooper kid. But the toys, I really liked Ben Cooper toys. And I knew the name Ben Cooper in association with toys. I'm not sure if I knew Ben Cooper connected with the costumes. I don't know if I connected the two, if it was just a Halloween costume was a Halloween costume. But I knew the toys were Ben Cooper. I knew Imperial, and I knew Ben Cooper. 
as two companies that made these rubber toys that I liked so much. I didn't know Azrak Hanway by name, even though I had lots of their toys. For some reason, that, that acronym, A-H-I, that name, Azrak Hanway, it didn't stick with me until I was an adult collector and then I learned about who made these toys that I liked. But Ben Cooper and Imperial, when it comes to rubber toys, those companies really stuck in my head as a kid. I knew who was making these toys that I enjoyed. Okay, let's see, what should I show you next? Well, we saw the Pumpkin Man, so now let's see um, Mr. Scarecrow. So here's Mr. Scarecrow. I hope these are in focus. Here's friendly Mr. Scarecrow. I have two of these and their arms are in slightly different positions. And it seems like it's a little more than you would th expect just like variations in how they come out of the mold. It seems like the difference is a little more extreme than that. So this Mr. Scarecrow was sold alongside the Mr. Pumpkin or Pumpkin Man. And those were specifically Halloween related. As you can see, they're orange Halloween colors. And as far as I know, they're the only really Halloween-y jigglers Ben Cooper made with the Halloween colors. They made a lot of monsters and halloween -y characters like witches and so on. But I can't think of another Ben Cooper jiggler that was orange, had Halloween orange. I mean, those are very specifically orange pumpkin and scarecrow. Okay, what next? Let's look at speaking of witches and speaking of flying things. As I was saying about the, the elastic, you have to be so careful. That's why I can't just pull this elastic aside or read the, the tag because it'll break the elastic. It's so old. Here is, I think her name's Wilma. Wilma the Witch. And she is flying. Wee! Ha 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 ha! Ben Cooper made several characters in this flying position. They made Batman, Superman, Spider Man, all in this flying position. We're going to see a devil in this position. But like I said, I've never seen a Frankenstein that was in that catalog. I've never seen him in a flying pose like this. And there's that uh, tag. Now, if I try to pull that elastic aside to look to read that, it's going to break the elastic. No paint on the underside. Can you see any detail in there? Yeah, a little bit. Woo! -hoo. I hope I don't break something right on camera. So the rubber's very jiggly. So you'd think, oh, these are not delicate at all. But that part, if you want to keep them tag intact, that's what's delicate. That's what will come off because of that elastic gets brittle. It gets gooey, it gets brittle, and it comes apart. Okay, so there's a witch. Now, let's... um. Oh, let's see. We have another witch. Where is she? There she is. Okay, this is a standing witch. She's a little different. This is a house haunter from Walgreens. And I don't think it has a... Well, it doesn't have a date that I can find. Recommended for children six years and over, made in Hong Kong, Ben Cooper, Brooklyn, New York. Okay, so here's the standing witch. <laughs> She's got her arms up to scare you. Is she doing a good job? Is she scaring you? 
She's got a little Aurora model kit rope belt. Whenever you see a rope belt like that, whether it's Wolfman or Hulk or whatever, that's part of the legacy of Aurora model kits, giving their characters rope belts. Now, comic book aficionados can tell me, did the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, ever have an actual rope belt around his waist? Because he's often depicted that way in products. But I don't think he, or at least he used to be back in the day, I don't know if in the comic books he ever had a rope around his waist. Maybe he did, I don't know. I know Wolfman never did. But those are two characters that are often depicted as having rope belts. Frankenstein sometimes is depicted as having a rope around his waist. That's all, it all comes from Aurora, 1960s Aurora model kits and the way that, and they, they put those rope belts on those characters. Here's a House Haunters tag. And not all of them say House Haunters. Some of them say Mighty Monster or something else. They had different, or some of them don't really have a, a, a series name, just a character name. Those names changed over time. Let's look at Devils next. First, let's look at the older one. This is Danny the Devil. Isn't he something? Look how he's got highlights. He's a nice, rich, dark red. Kind of a brick red. I'll look at his tag in a second. He's also in that Superman-like flying pose. And you'll remember the creature people from last season. They are, they are also in a flying pose. So Ben Cooper really liked that flying pose. Now, is his name Danny? Yeah, Danny Devil. And they got kind of fancy with, with the way they... I don't know if you can see that unless the light reflects on it. But they got kind of fancy with the way they handle the typeset on that. It's not just block letters. It's fancy looking letters. Now, here is another devil. Same mold. You know, it's Ben Cooper. And I, I have several devils. And they're, they're, I think I have two of that dark version and then a few of these. I used to have more. I used to have some Made in China ones that were more recent. And I got rid of most of my Made in China. Because a lot of, well not a lot, but a few of these Ben Coopers were reissued uh, as Made in China. Stiff PVC, rigid PVC figures in the 90s. I used to have a few of those. I don't know if I have any now. Maybe some witches, but that's about it. But I used to have a few devils like that. But I have several devils like this. Now you'll notice this guy, he's a lighter red. He's got a different elastic. That's a later style. That, that shorter elastic came later. And it would have had originally a rectangular tag, kind of like that which we just saw. And let's see if we can get them side by side without destroying anything here. You can see there, they're different colors. Their eyes are different. And uh, the way they're painted is different. Now, the interesting thing about this particular devil, this is my childhood devil. So I've had him since I was a little kid. This was given to me as a Christmas present by a friend named Matt Langer. And he's still around. I still know him. Uh, I still see him on Facebook. 
Matt Langer. He gave me this as a as a Christmas present. It was a school Christmas party. This was his present to me. And I still got it. Ah! So that's my childhood devil. And as I was looking at these devils, one of the reasons I said I had multiples was because I posed a problem. I couldn't remember which one was my childhood one. Um, and finally it was this little rub on his tail. <laughs> and that's how I identified him. And also the absence of a paint smear that uh, another one of them had a paint smear. I said, okay, that's not my childhood one. But then I saw this rub on the paint. I said, okay, that's him. That's my childhood devil. That's him. I've had him a long time. And you can see he's very different. He's more translucent and a lighter, brighter red than this older devil. So this darker one is the earlier version. I don't think I have any other childhood uh, character jigglers. I have my childhood Imperial Grizzly, the movie Grizzly. Uh, I might have an alligator or a couple of sharks. I have a couple of Jaws sharks. Um, maybe a snake or something. But I don't have a lot of childhood jigglers, especially not character ones. I don't know if I have any other childhood character jigglers besides that devil and that grizzly. What are we going to look at next? Uh, let's look at... We mentioned Aurora uh, a minute ago. So this little guy is obviously based on a particular Aurora model kit. Which one is it? Why, it's the Forgotten Prisoner. And it's so obvious, and that's, that's what it is. That's the Forgotten Prisoner. I, even the... I mean, every detail about this is so much like the Forgotten Prisoner model kit. They just didn't try to hide it at all. Now, you will find different ver a lot, really, a lot of different versions of this jiggler. And, you know, I'm, I don't think I got rid of them. I think I just moved them to a different box. I think I still have them. I have several Made in China versions of this guy. And the way you can tell is they don't have this section right here. They're hollowed out right there. And the, and the rib cage is different. But at first glance, they look like the same toy. Well, let's, what does he say here? It just says House Haunter. Yeah, it doesn't have a character name. Just says House Haunter. There's a tag. And I have seen this for sale with a, a different tag. It does not say House Haunter. Uh, I think, was he bony? I think he was in one of those catalogs. Bones or bony or something. So he, the later, t I think the earlier ones s seemed to mostly say House Haunter. The later ones have character names. They, they put individual names on, on them. But I think these, uh, these tags that are, are sort of like an, an artist's palette, uh, I think w with that odd shape, I think those are the earlier ones, and then the rectangular tags, like the, obviously like these. Those are the later tags. So there's a lot of uh, different versions of this skeleton, and they're not all by Ben Cooper. That basic sculpt got around, and a lot of, uh, well, I don't know if it's a lot of companies, but there are other versions of that skeleton that are not Ben Cooper. Ben Cooper did put that skeleton out 
with a different tag, but there are other versions that are slightly bigger and that have a different sculpt with the rib cage uh, and are different consistencies with the rubber, more rigid, more, more of a plasticky kind of a feel. Uh, let's see, what should we look at next? Let's look at this because I can talk a little bit about the tag. This is a werewolf, obviously. It's the Wolfman, and again, gee, what, what is that based off of? That's obviously modeled off of the Aurora Wolfman model kit with the shirt, you know, shirtless and the ripped up pants. And I think he's got a, doesn't he have a, does he have a rope belt in there? I think he does. Oh, it's hard to tell. Yeah, he does. It's just not painted, but it's in the sculpt. He's got a rope belt. And that looks a lot like, a whole lot like the Aurora Wolfman model kit. And that's obviously what he's based on. His face looks a little bit like Curse of Bigfoot, but it's, it's modeled off of the, the Aurora Wolfman model kit. And he's got one of those older oval, kind of like an artist palette shaped uh, tags. And it just says House Haunter or is it House Haunters? I think it's just singular House Haunter. No, House is plural, House Haunters. But the one I had, so I did have this character as a kid, and the one I had said Wolfo on the tag, and that was in one of the catalogs we looked at. Ben Cooper issued the same Jiggler under the name Wolfo. W-O-L-F-O, -O, Wolfo. And he would have had one of those, probably, because I don't own one, but he would have had one of those yellow rectangular tags. And I do remember uh, once, years ago, there was a Wolfo with a Wolfo tag on eBay, and it was real expensive. I didn't buy it. I, I, I had it, you know, I watched it for months, <laughs> and finally someone bought it. Um, it would be nice to have, since I had it as a kid, it would be nice to have a Wolfo tagged version, but it's essentially the same the same jiggler. Oh, let's look at Dracula here. But the tag doesn't say Dracula. It just, well, again, it just says House Hunter. And I think... Oh, where should I hold him at? I don't know. I think... He was issued with a Vampo or something like that. I can't Wolfo. I think he was Vampo. I should look at open up that catalog again. So that's his House Haunters tag. Gotta be real careful with that. And he's in a scary hands up position. He's saying, Don't shoot. Well, he's a vampire, so the bullets wouldn't hurt him anyway. But he thinks he's being real scary with his hands up. Blah. Blah. It's not exactly a flying pose, but it sort of has that same style. And you can see the shape of his cape. Kind of like the Ben Cooper Batman has a similar cape. And since I brought it up, I'm curious to see what uh, what did they call him? I don't want to just speculate. If I'm going to mention it, I might as well just give you the accurate information here. So he's not called anything there. He's just House Haunters. But when they reissued him, what did they call him? Called him Dracula on this. Mighty Monster and Dracula. Hmm. 
mighty monster in Dracula. Here. So it's not uh, some goofy name like Vampo or something. It's, they called him Dracula. Okay, so, but he's a house haunter. But the, the same toy was issued as Dracula. Under the name Dracula. Now, at last, we're going to see one that doesn't have that, uh, a character, a monster character that doesn't have that old style tag. Here is... A Frankenstein. Wow. Very classic Ben Cooper Frankenstein. Ben Cooper Rugger. Rubber. Rugger. Ben Cooper Rubber Frankenstein. And Billy is stalking down there. He might try to eat this. And you can see that the tag does say Mighty Monster. It doesn't say House Haunters. It says Mighty Monster. Ben Cooper. He's got beautiful color, green all over. His skin is green all over. His hair is green. And I remember these colors vividly as a kid, the, especially the green hair on the green skin. I really like this a lot. And green boots. I just It looks like you could just eat it. <laughs> it looks delicious. You just chew. I bet I did chew on it as a kid. I'm sure I chewed on my Frankenstein. He's a beautiful toy. He's very, he's an iconic, classic, awesome Ben Cooper Jiggler. If you, if you were going to have just one of these, I think this would be the one to have. He's the classic Ben Cooper Jiggler. Now, as a kid, I also had this version. Smaller Ben Cooper Jiggler. And I thought maybe this wasn't made by Ben Cooper, but they did offer the higher end versions and the economy versions. This would have been their economy version. That doesn't mean it wouldn't have perhaps also been issued by a different company, but Ben Cooper did release both this more simplified version and then that bigger version we just saw. And they had different price points on them. And as a kid, I definitely remember this blue face very different from the other one we saw. Still has green boots, but they're, they're different. It's a different sculpt. It's not the same toy. It's very similar, but it's not the same. And I don't know if there's any markings on this. I don't think there are. I don't think there's markings on this one. Which is why I wasn't sure for a long time, did Ben Cooper actually make these? It was made in Hong Kong. And yes, I, I'm pretty confident that, based on what I've read, that Ben Cooper put out both versions. But that doesn't mean this might not have been available from another company. And that's one of the things I wanted to learn. How many of these were actually designed by Ben Cooper, made especially for Ben Cooper, and how many of these were pre-existing toys that were available for Ben Cooper to pick up and put their tag on it and sell it, sell it as their product. Before we move away from Frankenstein, this is a good opportunity to look at some packaged ones. I have a lot of packaged bugs, Ben Cooper bugs. I unfortunately don't have a lot of bagged monsters. I, I wish I had more of these bagged monsters. They don't come up very often. They're, they used to come up more often. They used to be a little easier to find, but not lately. So there's our friend Frankie. That's the header card. And it's simply called Scary Monsters Action Figures. Ben Cooper often called these things, besides wigglers or whatever, they also called them action figures. Because action figures were 
popular. The, the toy industry moved into this action figure era and Ben Cooper wanted to compete with other action figures. So they called these things action figures. I hear Billy getting into some trouble over there. I'll show you this one too. Uh, it's still Ben Cooper. Weirdy Wiggle Wigglers. They're not calling them Jigglers anymore. Or action figures, I should say. They're not calling them action figures. This one's a, a later one. Is there a date on it though? No, no I'm thinking it's a later one, but maybe it's an earlier one because there's not a not a barcode on it, so maybe it's actually earlier, not later. It's got some cool eyes. You see, there's no barcode, so this could be. I thought this was later, but you know, I think it's earlier. They still call it Scary Monsters, which is what they called the other one. Yeah, Scary Monsters. So they kept that name. Okay, now, here's the only superhero, superhero you're going to see today. As long as we're showing you packaged Ben Cooper toys, we might as well show you this. It's in the card, at least, is in awful condition, but I don't think I've ever seen another one. This is a carded Spider Man. I've seen a few other carded ones, you know, different characters, but uh, I don't know if I've seen another Spider Man. It's a nice old school Spider Man illustration. He's in that flying position. I'm hearing sounds over here that Billy's up to something. They wiggle and jiggle. On a string. Superhero Spider Man. They feel real. There's a little hole so you can feel how real they are. 1975? Yeah, 1975. And there's a copyright on the word superhero, and there's a copyright on Marvel Comics Group, and then Ben Cooper Inc. Made in Hong Kong, and I, rem I remember there were reading about the the name superhero. There was a bit of a trademark war over the names, the word, the term superhero, and then finally, DC and Marvel agreed to share. I don't know if a copyright or a trademark on the term superhero. Not all the Ben Cooper Jigglers were packaged this way, only a few. But it's mostly comic book and cartoon characters that were packaged like that. Okay, what are we looking at next? Let's look at Godzilla.
1980 Toho. That's supposed to be Godzilla. We saw that, that it was also sold as a prehistoric dinosaur. And then they just bought a licensing from Toho and uh, put a Godzilla tag on it. But they didn't change the sculpt. He doesn't have Godzilla's spinal plates. He doesn't really look like Godzilla. I think the uh, prehistoric dinosaur had a pronounced spike, a horn, on its nose. And this one doesn't. So they changed that. They took that off. But clearly it doesn't look like Godzilla. <laughs> He's nice and rubbery. At some point, the Ben Cooper jigglers lost their jiggle. Uh, and they became very stiff. And we'll, we'll see some of those in a minute. Before, well, I guess let's look at the cat and mouse. That's an example of what I'm talking about. First, let's look at the mouse. What? That was Billy meowing. Where are you? Oh, I see you. And if you haven't watched before, I have a black cat named Billy. And he's over there. Sometimes he sh jumps up here and says hi to everybody. So that's the mouse from the cat and mouse set. You see he's got red eyes. That's the only paint on him. And here's the tag. Cat and mouse. And he, it's just a rubber mouse. He, he is jiggly, the mouse is. But the cat is a little jiggler of Billy. Kind of skinny. Billy's not that skinny. It's a Billy toy. So that's the cat. That's a nice jiggler. Look at that. And there's the cat and mouse tag. It is a classic Halloween black cat in that pose. When Billy was younger, he would do that all the time. He would stretch like that and stick his tail up like that. Now that he's older and a bit heavier, <laughs> a bit wider, he doesn't do that. This, uh, this cat is stiff. This cat doesn't jiggle. This is a stiff more of a plastic PVC, more of a rigid kind of uh, material. It's not jiggly. The mouse is, though. The mouse is jiggly. The cat isn't. And I, ha I have two of those cats, and they're both stiff like that. I only have one mouse. I think the mouse is harder to find. I haven't tried looking for any of them lately, so I don't know how hard they find harder to find these days. Let's see here. I might as well show you this one. And this is the only... Well, besides Spider-Man, this is the only cartoon character you're going to see. I just figured, you know, he's kind of a... kind of sort of a... Um, Halloween-y character, I guess. That's Casper. And <laughs> just like a Ben Cooper costume, he's got his name on his chest. He's really cool. He's all white. I, I hate to even handle him. I don't want to get fingerprints all over him. He's got this beautiful, nice, pristine white color. Now, there was a, a collector on Facebook a few weeks ago who had a tagged example of this. This is not tagged. And his tagged one looked a little more translucent than this. This looks very solid. It's jiggly. I mean, it's made of soft rubber. But the one that this other collector had, it sort of had a translucent look. So I'm wondering if it's earlier or later than this, than this one. Unfortunately, this does not have a tag, but he's still cool. He's Casper the Friendly Ghost. Woo and his elastic is getting kind of, kind of gooey. 
Uh, where did I put him? I guess let's put him there. Now let's look at the caveman. I think they called him Stony, right? In that catalog. Oh, before we look at caveman, let's look at another. Well, no, we'll save that. We'll save that. Okay, here's... Here is a caveman, and I had one of these as a kid. I remember him well. And there is a, I know there's an Aurora a Neanderthal man model kit that this might have been modeled off of, or had, I think. I think there was some connection there. I think something about this pose. I don't have that Aurora kit, so I, I can't say for sure, but I do think there was some inspiration here that the Aurora kit inspired this, but I could be wrong about that. Now, this doesn't have any Ben Cooper markings, so I don't know if this one is one of the Ben Cooper Stony the Caveman Ben Cooper figures. In fact, I can tell you it's not. It's got this. Um, oh, I don't remember what this. What that uh, that Gigantor that logo. I think it's Gigantor. I'm not sure. Is it? Uh, what do you call that logo? It's confuses everybody. Um, well, anyway, but you can, you saw the image in the catalog. It's this Jiggler, but another company also made it. Now, here's a different version of that Jiggler. Does it have the same markings? No, it has different markings. So it has just as made in Hong Kong and nothing else. And it's probably an older one because it has this longer uh, elastic, more like an earlier Jiggler would have. He's all gray. Uh, same pose. I don't, I don't, I don't think this is the Ben Cooper one. I mean, it could be, it could be. He does not have that logo on the bottom of his foot like the other one. But he also doesn't say Ben Cooper anywhere. I think the Ben Cooper version was tan like that one, peach colored. I don't think it was this kind of a gray color. Uh, there, years ago, there was a caveman on eBay that was supposedly Ben Cooper, it had Ben Cooper markings. I don't remember if I was able to verify that or if that seller was just kind of saying that. I, but uh, I think it had Vancouver markings. And it was like that tan one. And essentially the same toy. And I think some of these, that, that's why I wonder how many of these originated with Ben Cooper and how many of them were already available and Ben Cooper just sort of picked up the toy as a wholesale item. Uh, from Hong Kong, like the factory was offering this variety of jiggler. You, you can buy a, a, you know, a quantity of them, put your tag on it. Because I know they did that with a, a shark that we saw in our Jaws episode. We, we've had two Jaws episodes. There was that shark exclamation point set with this swimmer, and that shark has been issued by other companies. So I don't think Ben Cooper made that shark. This, I, well, before we get to this Dracula, let's look at another bona fide Ben Cooper. So here's a King Kong. And this looks like it might be Dino De, Laurent Dino De Laurentiis era because he has that plane in his hand just because of the pose and the look of the head has that 76 Kong look 
This is Ben Cooper. It's got Ben Cooper markings. It doesn't have a tag, unfortunately, but it, it it's definitely Ben Cooper. So that's a Ben Cooper King Kong. Uh, let's see here. Oh, the Ben Cooper marking is on the back. Yep, Ben Cooper Inc. I don't think you can see it, but it's there, trust me. He's a cute little King Kong. I like him a lot. And he's kind of substantial, too. Got a weight to him. But he is jiggly. He's not stiff. He's not as jiggly as some of the ones we've seen, but he is jiggly. I don't know if they called him King Kong or called him something else. I do have a counter display box full of King Kong jigglers like this, but I don't think they're Ben Cooper. I don't think it's exactly this. I think it's similar, but not exactly this. I think I would know if it was Ben Cooper. I had some technical difficulties and I lost the last few minutes. So I, I had shown this Dracula and that got wiped out. Had a problem with the memory on this camera here. This memory was full. So we gotta start over with this guy. Uh, so if there's a little awkward transition, that's why. So I was showing you this, this Dracula. This is a Bela Lugosi style Dracula. He's different from the other Dracula we saw. He looks you know, you know, a little more serious and you can kind of see the Lugosi likeness. There is an attempt at a Lugosi likeness. You can really see it there. It's not hot toys quality. You know, it's not uh, caustic plastic, but it's, there is an attempt to make it look like Bela Lugosi. And for a jiggler, I think, you know, I think it's pretty good. I don't know if Ben Cooper made this one. Probably not. Probably not. But these jigglers were sold alongside Ben Cooper. And I think it's very possible that Ben Cooper did distribute this line of jigglers. And we're going to see some other examples of this. And I, by the way, there is a blue version of this Dracula that uh, there, there's one with soft features like this, but there's another blue version with very sharp details. And I am looking for either one, but particularly the blue one with the very sharp details. So if you've got one of those, let me know if you are looking to sell it. Now, this is what I think anyone would call a Ben Cooper hunchback jiggler. But I have no evidence that it was actually made by Ben Cooper. As a child, I have vivid memories of this jiggler being sold alongside Ben Cooper jigglers, like the kind we've already seen here, hanging from the same peg hooks but it's not in any Ben Cooper catalog I've seen so far. Not that I've seen that many, but it's not been in any catalog I've seen. And I've never seen one, one with a Ben Cooper tag. This is probably from the same series as that Dracula we just saw. There's an assortment of uh, monster jigglers that I showed you a couple of years ago that... Um, it's very different from these. It's got uh, like a Frankenstein with a rib cage and some other weird, weird things like that. It's a very odd assortment. And, you know, this, I was going to say this hunchback and maybe this Dracula came from that assortment, but these are available in different colors. I have multiple different colors of this hunchback. I have them in many colors. Uh, and there are colors I don't have. I've seen them in other colors. So I like to have a few more, a few more of these hunchbacks in different colors. But as a kid, 
this is what I saw at the store. This is what I had as a kid. I had this style in black rubber with a blue face. I love the blood on his hands. And there's his hunch. You gotta show the hunch and a hunch back. Now, again, it's pretty obvious what this is based on. This is based on the Aurora model kit, this 1960s Hunchback of Notre Dame Aurora model kit. I mean, just every detail just screams Aurora. The chains and the ropes and everything is, of course, it's Aurora. It's based on Aurora. Everything about it is obviously based on Aurora. It's based much more on Aurora than on any depiction of the Hunchback. Although, I mean, that face, it does have sort of a Cheney hunchback face with that that big hair, which the Aurora kit doesn't have. That does look more like the Cheney movie version of the hunchback with that big round poof of hair. There are different colors of him, this hunchback available, uh, and I don't know if it was made by Ben Cooper, but I suspect Ben Cooper at some point distributed some of these these oddball ones that are not marked Ben Cooper. I don't know that Ben Cooper made them, but I think I think they distributed them at some point. Even though they don't have Ben Cooper markings. Now here's a pair of mummies. I remember these vividly from my childhood. And I have multiple colors of these mummies too, but this is the kind I had as a kid. This is exactly what I had as a child, that green color. I remember this very well. I got him at a school Halloween party. Uh, kind of like that devil I got. He, he, uh, Matt Langer gave it to me as, in a school Christmas party. This was given to me by someone else at a school Halloween party. Uh, not, this, isn't my, this is not my childhood one. I mean, one like this was given to me. Uh, that devil that I showed you, that is my childhood devil. This is not my childhood mummy. But the one I had as a kid looked just like this. And again, hey, what does it look like? <laughs> it's the Aurora mummy model kit. Even the cobra and everything. Look at that, That's the, that is the Aurora kit. Even more so than the Azrak Hanway mummy jiggler. This really looks like the Aurora kit translated into a, a rubber jiggler. It, it even has the bandages falling off of it. He's creeping along like that. Now here is another mummy jiggler that's completely different. It's it's a different sculpt altogether from top to bottom. This mummy jiggler is it obviously looks similar but it is a different sculpt. Every everything about this there's it shares nothing with the one I just showed you. It's a completely different sculpt. And this looks a little more like the Azrak Hamway one, but you know not very much, but I mean it's a little closer to that, a little farther away from the Aurora kit, but obviously still very much inspired by the Aurora kit. You can see that it's very different, different face, different everything, everything's different. Very similar, but not the same. And I don't think either of these mummies have any markings except Hong Kong. No. I like though how this one has bandaged texture on the bottom of his feet. The bottom of his feet are, have that sculpt, sculpted bandages. Now that's unique, you don't see that often. This is more typical, just smooth on the bottom of his feet. And uh, no markings other than Hong Kong on this guy. 
So I don't know if, uh, I don't know if, oh, which, I don't know which bag this went in. <laughs> um, I don't know if Ben Cooper had anything to do with those mummies, but as a kid, there was no doubt that those mummies were sold alongside Ben Cooper jigglers. They were all together. Now maybe when they were putting these toys out, they just mixed them all up. I don't know. But as a kid, I did not differentiate between the hunchback or this mummy or this blue face Frankenstein or caveman or any of these other things. I did not differentiate between those and the, the ones that we know are Ben Cooper. I think we've come to the last jiggler. This is the infamous acid woman. I am pretty sure that was not made by Ben Cooper, but I just, I can't say, I can't say for sure. She is hideous. She's got this bottle, I presume of acid that she's pouring over herself. And <laughs> at least that's what collectors tend to believe. Now she could just be rotting, but it looks like she's pouring acid over herself. So she's become known as the acid woman. And what a hideous, awful toy. <laughs> and she's a prisoner. You can see she's got chains. So it could just be she's in prison and she's rotting, but it's half her body is rotting. But then if she's pouring acid, why wouldn't the other half be melting? I don't know. It's really a sad, terrible toy. I used to have more of these. This is the only, only one I have now. I think I kind of had a problem with this one. <laughs> I think I just wanted one representative example of her. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a dark toy for sure. Oh, she's kind of getting pushed in there. Hmm. Got a weird little dimple there. I wonder what that's about. Never noticed that before. <laughs> well, anyway, now I don't know. And, and also she's kind of risque. I mean, look at that. Look at that for a children's toy in the 1970s. I mean, just the whole thing, everything about it is risque to put it mildly and just, it's weird. I can't see Ben Cooper making something like that. So I don't know. There were, I especially like weird jigglers or jigglers that are sort of problematic, that are not okay, that wouldn't be made today. There's a lot of weird, weird jigglers like that. Jigglers with gory, gross aspects. And uh, there's something kind of seedy about some of those jigglers, including this one. Something inappropriate about them that makes them even more appealing. That's the last jiggler I wanted to show you. So, uh, sorry about the technical problem. I hope that didn't, I hope when I'm editing, I, I don't find that that's a great obstacle. I think I, I think I recovered from that. Um, well, what can I say? I didn't, I haven't really talked about what these meant to me as a child, but I had a lot of these as a kid. I had a lot of them. And the ones I didn't have, I saw at the store. So these are a big part of my childhood, owning them, playing with them, but also seeing them at the store. I would see these things in a drug store or at Ben Franklin. I didn't really see them at like um, Target or Venture or Kmart. I, I don't remember seeing them at places like that. I remember seeing them at drug stores. Ben Franklin, stores whose names I can't even remember anymore, just like junk stores, dime stores. There's a 
term people don't talk about anymore. Dime stores, drug stores, dime stores, Ben Franklin. And there were a lot of uh, dime stores back then. I guess today that would be the dollar stores, but they were, it's not the same thing. The dollar store today, like Dollar General, that's not the same as the dime store back in the day. I guess it's the modern equivalent, but it's a different experience and it's, it's, it, it serves a different purpose. It's not the same. Uh, but that would be the closest thing if, if you didn't live through that time and you're thinking dime store or what, huh? What Ben Franklin, what's he talking about? Just think um, the, a dollar store. When I think of my childhood, I, I th in, in toys and toy stores, I think of dime stores and Ben Franklin and drug stores more than the bigger stores. I certainly went to Kmart or Kresge, Target and Venture, and places that don't exist anymore, like Skaggs and Knights, all kinds of weird places that I don't even remember their names anymore. But, um, but I really remember those small stores that that had these weird things that the bigger stores didn't have, and that's where I got this stuff. That's where I got the Jigglers. So when I look at these things, um, I imagine them hanging from the pick hooks or uh, in those counter boxes. And sometimes in, in the, the toy departments in these stores, they'd have just all those boxes just lined up in shelves full of those boxes. And you just go through almost like a bazaar and rummage through those things and find cool stuff. The whole world of jigglers are just bizarre. There's, it's an endless world. There's so many different kinds, so many varieties. What I'm showing you here is like the Walt Disney of jigglers. This is the mainstream. You're not you're not taking a walk on the wild side with these. The other more off-brand jigglers, those that's where it gets wild. And we've seen a few of those on the show, and we might we might see. A few more in the future but that's a it's a huge universe R rubber jiggly pvc toys it's a collecting genre unto itself and ben cooper was a major player in that genre of toys and it doesn't get talked about enough whenever people talk about ben cooper they could write a whole book or do a whole documentary just talking about the costumes the costumes the costumes and they never bring up this. And as important as Ben Cooper costumes were to me as a kid, this little guy, this is my childhood double, he was more important. He had a bigger impact on me. This little buddy. So I loved the Ben Cooper costumes, but these toys meant more to me than the costumes. So I, I would love to be able to do something more substantial on the toys, the Ben Cooper toys. If there's someone out there who can give me a hand and hook me up, get me in touch with someone who can give me an interview. Maybe maybe we would make it an episode and we just uh, you know have the interview, like a Zoom interview, and have the person just tell us all about what was going on with Ben Cooper? What, what was the Jiggler market like? What were other companies doing? What were they responding to? Maybe we need a book about just Jigglers, the world of Jigglers. But it would have to be something more than just someone who owns a bunch of Jigglers. I own a lot, but there are other people who own more than I have. That would be a boring book, just like here's my collection in a book. We need information, history. How did these things come about? Who are the players? What were they trying to achieve? How are they reacting to one another? And how did this work in Hong Kong? How do you get something like this Bela Lugosi Dracula and these, this other stuff that it's not clear who made it. 
it seems like different companies like this this uh caveman different companies put this out so how did that work is there some unsung company out there that produced all these things that was like the jiggler specialist and maybe made the jigglers for all the other companies i don't know i like to find the answers to those questions so uh, we covered things that were not necessarily halloween but uh, i all the stuff to me is halloween even though they were available all year round they were mostly available they were featured around Halloween time. So let's end on a, a Halloween character. Go back to our buddy here. And his friend, the Scarecrow. Happy Halloween! Ah! That's it. Okay. Until next time. The one who dies with the most toys is dead. <laughs> <laughs>